What is up teachers on fire today? I want to show you how to use pixlr.com to make an object disappear. That's right. We're going to use the best cloud-based photo editor that I know of the, the best free one, I should say that I know of to make an object disappear. Let's jump into pixlr.com. So pixlr isn't spelled exactly how it sounds It's P I X L R.com. And when we arrive here, we're going to select the advanced photo editor, advanced photo editor. I'm going to open an image. You can see that image right there. And I think I want the this one. That's right. So this is a picture that I found of beautiful Stanley Park in Vancouver, British Columbia. And you can see what is called the seawall, a place I have walked many times. And we're going to start by cropping this picture just so that you can see a little bit better what I am about to do. And I'm going to make this fit the frame. So I just use the crop tool there. Now, I said that we were going to make an object disappear, and the object that I want to make disappear is our beloved and the very iconic Siwash Rock, which would really destroy a lot of Vancouverites to actually make this object disappear, but we will do so today. We're going to start by hitting the Control Plus button, and this should work fine if you are working on a Chromebook or PC. I'm actually on a MacBook right now and that works there as well. So control plus just a quick way to zoom in on the screen. I would imagine you can also go through view as well. That's right. Adjust your zoom there. Okay, so we've got a good look at Siwash Rock, this iconic island. And we're going to make it disappear by using this tool over here. It's a the icon is actually a stamp. We're going to do something called cloning. So to start, you can see that the brush size is 40 and I'm going to hit the shift key. I wish it made it a little bit more clear that the shift key is important in terms of selecting a source for the stamp. So the program, Pixlr, is basically asking you where do you want to stamp from and then once we've got that figured out, you can stamp wherever you like. So I'm holding down the shift key and then I'm going to left click. You can see the size of my circle actually is way too big, so we're going to lower that to 30 lower that down to 30 ish right okay selecting a source and I can start cloning so I, I clicked on the, the sky now notice if I I don't feel like zooming out just yet but um, the the sunset sky here ranges in color from blue to yellow so it's going to be a it's going to be important that we draw from the same sort of strata when we are doing our editing, we, we want the sky to match horizontally, right? Because that's going to be telling if we start stamping blue sky into areas of yellow. So do that carefully. I'm going to go next to the water area because the water is broken. And I'll admit that's part of the reason why I selected this photo. Now, if the water was still, it might actually be very stampable but I think I just made up a word there. But since the water is, uh, you know, there's some wind out on the waves, we can do some stamping. And if we stamp from different areas, it's not going to be very easy to tell. What we're trying to do is fool the casual observer, right? Someone who is just looking at this picture, and maybe not very carefully. I'm quite aware of that. You know, if you put these photos under the microscope, so to speak. Now I'm seeing a bit of a pattern in my stamping here. That's not good. So that's going to be sort of a telltale sign. I'm, I'm drawing my source from further, let's say from over here. And let's try that again. See that line that was sort of developing there? So you, that's one reason why you don't want to, oh, I didn't intend to do that. I think my finger dragged on the trackpad a little bit. All right, let's just get back to where we were working. So again, we, we don't wanna just drag straight across. That's going to definitely leave a line. We wanna do some kind of a, a hodgepodge is the term that our parents would use, right? Do a little bit of a hodgepodge. Okay, so hopefully that looks random and messy enough that it's not going to tell off the casual observer and let them know that there's been any editing happening here. Let's keep going back to the island. I'm going to cut off the top of the island by stamping it out there. Now I've got this little bit of cloud. So let's go down to five. Here's where we, five-ish. Here's where we, things get a little trickier, but I'm going to extend this cloud over and this cloud is going to help me sort of cover up 
what I'm doing a little bit. Yeah, I'm not perfectly satisfied with that, but that'll do. I think got some different cloud formations going on here. Then I'm going to draw from this light sky area. It's tricky, I tell you. It's very tricky. It's not the easy business to do. To do the stamping very well. Should be pretty good let's add a little bit more land stretching out from the ubc side Maybe two pixels and then folks we are basically done and we'll take a look at the great reveal let's see how i did here that doesn't look too bad okay let's zoom out and see what we have so i'm hitting the control minus button hold that down to go right out and folks, we just made Sea Watch Rock disappear. The island is gone. Could be a fun source of April Fool's Day fun. Could put out a press release saying City of Vancouver just decided to get rid of Sea Watch Rock for better sight lines for cyclists on the seawall. And watch the uproar that follows. So save that to your folder. It will, by default, go back to the same source folder where you pulled your image in the first place. Teachers, I hope that is helpful. I hope it energizes you, gives you some ideas for how to use Pixlr.com in your teaching and in your classes. And uh, I look forward to seeing what you come up with. If you do create some disappeared objects, if you transform some photos, go ahead and tag me at Teachers on Fire on any social media platform, and I will be sure to take a look at your work. Have fun teachers and keep on learning. Bye-bye.